What is up, YouTube? This is Levi from Bayfoils, and today we got a special video to coincide with the release of Flightboard's new folding propeller. Today we're going to be talking about propeller modules, talk about Flightboard's sander propeller, their new folding prop, their flight jet, and also I'm going to include a bonus propeller, so stay tuned to see what we talk about there. If you're new to the channel, we do a lot of e-foil related videos, both like writing as well as tips and tricks to make you a better writer. And these table talks where I talk about our e-foil crafts and kind of go into some of the technical aspects, you know, very science light. If you want more hardcore science, please, I recommend checking out some science YouTubes on the physics behind hydrofoils and all these cool toys that we like to ride. If you enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing to our channel. We're really trying to grow it. Dropping a comment or like really helps me know which videos you enjoy so I can keep making more of those. Let's talk about the math, <laughs> the boring part. I don't know, I really like the math. But how do we get thrust out of our e-foil? So with all e-foils, there's some sort of propulsion system. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> My Google ads are pretty accurate. They know what I look up, as I say it. Propeller thrust. So we have here our formula. Again, this is like our best case scenario, frictionless vacuum. We have our density of water, the cross-sectional area times the the delta in velocity of the fluid that we're cutting through. If you look on here, the density of the water is kind of constant and we can only change our speed so much gradually with, you know, the limits of the motor. The cross-sectional area is kind of where the blade size and also the pitch, basically how much uh, sweep, sweep back of an angle the blade has. An intrinsic property of this is also how many blades we have. More blades means there's more area that's being swept in a revolution. Well, we'll talk more about that, but that also is something to consider. Propellers, they're nothing new. They've been around for over a hundred years. You know, they're the standard propeller that you see on both boats and airplanes too to an extent is this kind of screw-like three-bladed propeller. This dates back to the Archimedes screw principle and how it displaces water. And it's really a tried and true design. It's really hard to improve on it. It's relatively simple. It's symmetrical. Flight board produced one using fiberglass reinforced plastic. So it's really inexpensive and easy to replace if it gets broken. And for 90% of people, the standard propeller is totally awesome. It's gonna give you good power, it's reliable. Like I mentioned already, if you crash into something and break your propeller, it's inexpensive to replace. And it's kinda just good. I usually keep like two extra in my car whenever I go ride somewhere in case if I do trash my prop, I can just throw another one on there real easy and keep riding. There's really only one drawback to this and that's if you let go of the trigger and the motor ceases to spin, so does the propeller, which creates a lot of drag and will dump you off the board. <laughs> so it makes feathering the prop really difficult and it also renders it basically impossible to surf or ride unpowered. Flightboard has a couple options. There's the True Glide, which came out a couple years ago. This was their first design that they came out with, which is taking the tried and true three blade propeller and adapting it with a bearing. I'm gonna link an article the, a scientific study that was done on freewheeling versus locked versus feathering propellers on sailing vessels. This article here from Science Direct and partnered with Ocean Engineering. This was from a university in Scotland and they tested, you know, a wide variety of different feathering, static, and freewheeling propellers to look at the drag uh, coefficient and, you know, torque and all sorts of science stuff. It's really heady. I'm going to link it if anyone wants to read it, but it's really dense. Um, <laughs> it 
you can scroll all the way down to the findings for their like summary like the concluding remarks but basically a freewheeling propeller is like a hundred percent more efficient in terms of drag and it's one of the most efficient propeller designs compared to you know feathering ones and folding ones especially at higher speeds it has a spinning bearing that the propeller will freewheel around so if you let go of the, the trigger and you still have momentum it's going to spin flying through the water combines the balanced performance of a three blade propeller with a freewheeling aspect that makes surfing weight foiling you know all the the more advanced fun funner stuff possible obviously you know this needs to be used without a propeller guard for to reduce that drag but you know at this point i tell people with the standard propeller take off your prop guard after like two or three sessions once you're comfortable because that also makes a big difference too the only drawback with this is it's a lot more expensive because of the extra machining it requires lubrication which you got to take apart like every month or so to keep it spinning really good and they're just a lot more expensive if you trash it if we look at flightboard's newest uh, product their folding propeller now this was kind of a long time coming because a competitor flight's biggest competitor lift has had a folding prop on the market for a number of years now. You know, a lot of people, especially the really surf wakeboard enthusiasts, they want that folding prop because it has the lowest drag profile at slow speeds, which when we're surfing wakes, we're pretty much at like the minimum speed for for flight. Like we're, we're riding pretty slow compared to if we were surfing a wave. So the folding prop gets us that maximum glide at those slow speeds you know in order for it to work properly it needs to be metal you can't really mold plastic on a f actuating thing like that it's going to get destroyed if both flightboard and lift use aircraft grade aluminum which drives the price up considerably we can see here the price four hundred and thirty five dollars I mean, in the grand scheme of thing, when you're putting 12 grand into your e-foil, this is kind of inexpensive, but that's still a pretty big investment to get this folding prop action. In terms of performance, when, at the speeds that we're talking about with the torque on these motors, there's not really a performance difference between aluminum and plastic. It's mainly a safety thing. Plastic is relatively easy to destroy. So if you were to hit something, say your leg or a creature, chances are you're gonna blow up the propeller and not cut your limb off <laughs> versus with the aluminum propeller you're probably gonna do a lot more damage to whatever you struck not to mention you're probably gonna do more damage to your motor because when you with the flightboard plastic propeller you hit something hard enough chances are it's gonna shatter the propeller but it's not gonna transfer those forces onto the actual motor pinion you're gonna leave that relatively intact versus with the aluminum hitting something hard enough could potentially bend that motor shaft and render the e-foil un unusable anymore. That's going to be a lot more expensive than, you know, $35 propeller replacement. You're looking at $1,000 or more for a motor replacement. So there are some trade-offs. The big one we can see is it's a two-blade design. They, they increase the pitch, so it has a steeper angle, and the blades themselves are a larger surface area to make up for losing one blade with a two blade propeller in order to get the same amount of water displacement it's spinning at a faster rate on average and this is the same for boats planes a two blade versus a three blade versus a four blade is going to have much faster rotation which in turn creates higher tip speeds which is our number one factor in noise and cavitation. What's cavitation? Well, basically cavitation are those little air bubbles that go around a propeller from the pressure difference of the front on the front of the blade and the water on the back of the blade. They're called vortices at the very tip of the blade that contributes to noise and also vibration and turbulence. Basically, it's drag, it's not awesome. We kind of want, we want to minimize that. You know, if we're designing a propeller, we want to minimize that by the most. And so a folding propeller, because it has a larger blade and it's rot and it's only two and it's rotating faster, those cavitation lines are much thicker and stronger. And so a two blade prop is going to be louder 
and it's going to have more vibration in general. And you, this is something you could look up on boat props too and go on the forums and see a lot of evidence pointing towards this direction too. It's the same on our EFOIL. It's not as important because we're not on a, uh, an uh, internal combustion engine, which has a lot of noise and vibration from crankshafts and, and transmissions and stuff. If you were just to compare in a vacuum, a three blade prop and a two blade prop, the two blade prop is going to be louder still. W what if we want to eliminate the, that cavitation entirely? Well, that's where we get the flight jet. This is our, our option if we're looking to have the smoothest, most efficient, quietest ride. This shields the propeller blades from the tip vortices. So all that water is just extruded out the back. We can see here with the jet, there's no cavitation lines as it's flying through the water. It's just a smooth stream that makes it super quiet. There's not a lot of turbulence. The only thing that's bad about the jet is the efficiency on the battery is lower. Just like the, the two blade prop, the jet has to spool up really fast in order to get the, your initial thrust because the blade, the sweep on the blades is much more shallow than a standard propeller. So it, it takes more power from the battery to get this spooled up and to continuously provide enough thrust. So the jet, the dr biggest drawback is you don't get as much ride time as a standard propeller. And it's also, you know, if we look at the price, it's 1450 because this is all aircraft grade aluminum as well. It's a lot more expensive, but this is a lot safer. You know, you're not going to injure yourself or destroy this by hitting something, some coral or, or driftwood in the water. This is going to be a lot tougher, a lot more durable, and you know, just a lot safer as well. The question you might be thinking is, well, how do I get the, the smoothness and quietness of a jet, but the efficiency of a propeller? Well, in the past couple of years, there's been some interesting developments in marine foil technology for propellers with the evolution of toroidal propellers. So that's a mouthful. You might be asking, what's a toroid? Well, a toroid is essentially a donut. <laughs> I'm not going to get into detail on it, but basically a toroid extends the trailing edge all the way to the end back at the propeller shaft. So it, it spreads that that pressure that normally collects on the tip, the vortice, and spreads it out across the entire uh, surface of the propeller. You can see right here, this Mobius strip looking blade, where if you keep going, if you look at the trailing edge, it stays the trailing edge the whole time. There's not, there's no tip. Uh, it's one continuous edge, same with the leading edge. And these are, these are really cool. You can, you can see, in this video how the the standard tip creates a kind of like whirlpool effect whereas with the Shero prop this is you know Shero is the marine company that has the patent for these toroidal props it creates dramatically less of a slice uh, dramatically reduced tip vortice and so this company efoil solutions have figured out a toroidal propeller for an e-foil, which is kind of cool. It's definitely having your cake and eating it too. I definitely want to try one. This one is only for lift e-foils. If you guys want to make a flight board one and send me one to test out, I'd be happy to give you my thoughts. But this could be potentially really cool, but it could also be potentially not worth it because the problem with toroidal props is due to the geometry, they're really difficult to engineer. It takes some really precise engineering to make sure that the, the foil shape, the, the, the contour, the size, the design is really precise. If it's off by a little bit, it'll mess up how it works. They're asking $600, you know, to make up for their R&D to, to make this propeller happen. Standard propeller on the bottom, see all that, those tip vortices, and then the Shero propeller on the top. It's it's a night and day difference. So could be cool on any e-foils, but also could be diminishing returns. We could spend a lot of money and not really have anything. Plus, these also won't help you surf, so 
I, I mostly look to get out and surf waves on my e-foil, so this is not really my cup of tea. But that's pretty much it for our, our propeller modules. You know, each there's not like a one size fits all. You know, it's going to be really dependent on your ride style. You know, if you're just looking to have a quiet, smooth ride, you're probably just going to want to go with a flight jet. If you're looking to surf, you know, big waves, like ocean waves, probably want the True Glide because it's you're going to get more power out of the three blade design, but you still have the freewheeling design. And especially with a big steep wave, you're going to be going fast enough where the difference between the folding prop and the freewheeling prop is going to be negligible. But, you know, if you're foiling behind a boat, like surf and wake, you probably want to get the folding prop. Because this is more efficient at those slower speeds of a boat wake versus the high speeds of like uh, f f six to eight foot, you know, ocean swell. So at the end of the day, there's not like a one size fit all. It's just really going to be dependent on what you are trying to do. Well, that's it for today. Please drop a comment if you enjoyed the video, press that thumbs up button, and share with a friend. You know, we're really trying to grow the channel and provide more cool videos like this. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.